Hey everybody! So today I'm going to be going over some of the basic editing tools that you can find in Nuke Studio. Uh, for this demonstration I'm going to be using the non-commercial version of the software, but everything I do will be the same as what you would find in the full version. So start by opening up the, the program. Okay, and notice that it says uh, this is Nuke non-commercial, but that's no big deal. So the first thing I'm going to do is start a new project. And I'm sure you all know how to do this. Um, Nuke will open up its default task pane uh, configuration. So you basically just have project, and then your viewer, properties tab, and then sequence timeline editor, node graph, curve editor, and dope sheet. Uh, I'm going to assume you know the basics of all of this stuff. So I'm going to uh, skip and do some editing. So the first thing you need to do, obviously, is import some media. And you do that by right-clicking in the Project tab, hitting Import, and then Import File. My file is located somewhere within my Downloads folder. Let's find it here. OK, so I have my file that I want to use. Uh, notice any file that you bring in will show up right here in the Project tab. And all you need to do to start editing the file is simply click on it, drag it, and then drop it in the sequence editor. And then Nuke will create a nice timeline for you, uh, showing the total duration of the clip. Um, and then it'll bring in your video file and audio. Now, um, most of the time you'll have an audio file. In this case, I don't, since this is actually uh, archived silent footage. Uh, from the 1940s, I think. Um, so in this case, I don't have any audio. But that's fine for what I want to show you. So let me first um, go over some basics of editing in your sequence timeline. Um, to zoom in and out on the footage like this, all you do is use the scrolling wheel on your mouse. So say you wanted to look at a specific point on your timeline, you can zoom in by scrolling. And also you can zoom out by scrolling the opposite direction. Now another thing I want to mention uh, from the beginning, it'll make more sense as we go along. Um, you can use this, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but uh, I think, you know, position indicator, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can use this to actually uh, snap to with your editing tools. And like I said, that'll make sense as we continue along. So all of your editing tools in Nuke are going to be located on the left side of your sequence tab, right here where I'm hovering my cursor. And notice if you hover your cursor over an icon for more than a couple seconds, um, a little description will come up that kind of tells you what the tool does and how you can use it. So you have five different tools in uh, Nuke, five different primary tools, I should say. You have uh, the multi-tool, which is kind of a combination of all of these tools below. You have the select track tool, which basically allows you to select different tracks and clips within your timeline uh, based on the location of your position indicator. So say you were wanting to select a bunch of clips to the right of this indicator, you would just select uh, the select track to right tool, and that would allow you to do that. And then I think the rest of those are pretty self-explanatory. Then you have the slip clip and slide clip tools. Um, I'll cover those a little bit later. And then you have the roll edit, ripple edit, and retime tool. And then finally, you have your razor, razor all, and join tools. And that's basically, it sounds, uh, it does exactly what it sounds like it would do. Um, you can use it to split up a large clip into multiple smaller clips, and then rejoin them if you would like uh, once you do some editing. So I could go over each of these individually, but I think the best way to kind of show you how powerful Nuke is uh, with its editing tools is to use the multi-tool, because the multi-tool is actually, actually uh, like I said, a combination of all of these tools, and you don't have to um, 
you know, select each tool individually to get done what you want to get done. It's a much quicker workflow working with the multi-tool. Um, so anyway, first thing I'm going to do is just split up my clip into a few sections so we can make some edits. So you do that by just selecting the razor tool and then clicking in whatever locations uh, you want to split up the clip. So notice I just created three smaller clips um, out of my larger clip and I can move these apart with my multi-tool if I want. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave them adjacent to one another. Okay, so now I have my multi-tool selected. The first thing that you can do with the multi-tool is a uh, trimming operation. So say you have this short clip at the end, and you wanted to kind of get rid of some of this end material, where we just have some empty frames, and then this little logo. So if we wanted to get rid of that, all you have to do is hover your cursor over the end of the, the clip and notice a little bar with a left-facing arrow shows up. That's just indicating that you can start trimming your clip. And then to do that, you just drag to the left and notice um, the number of frames that you're going to be trimming off the end shows up um, underneath here. Right now it's at 514. So let's just say we want to trim it to there. Release your cursor, and there you go. You have that little portion of the clip trimmed off. Now you can also do the same thing uh, on the other side of the clip by hovering your cursor over the left end of the clip, and then notice a bar will show up with a right-facing arrow. And you can click and begin to drag to the right, and shorten the clip by that method as well. Okay, and then, oh, another thing I forgot to mention um, is if you have your multi-tool selected, you can also move individual clips um, just by hovering in the middle of the clip and then left-clicking, and you can move it wherever you want. Okay, so those are some basic operations. Um, the next tool I would like to go over is the slip clip tool, and you can... Uh, like the rest of these tools, access it from the multi-tool. And how you do that is hover your cursor over the bottom of the clip. And notice a little icon will show up um, that's showing you you can begin editing with the slip clip tool. Now what the slip clip tool does is it will maintain the number of frames within your clip. And notice right now I have 1,048 frames in this small clip. Um, so it'll keep that number of frames constant, but you can change the beginning frame and end frame by sliding to the left or right. And notice that three windows will show up in your viewer task pane. Um, what those windows are, are basically showing you where your new begin clip and new end, uh, I'm sorry, where your new begin frame and new end frame will be. So on the far left is showing you uh, what your start frame is. And then the frame on the far right is showing you what your end frame is. And you can adjust um, where those frames fall by sliding your cursor and then releasing it. And in order to do this, uh, you will need to have a clip that you have previously shortened. Um, for example, if I had you know, this full length clip that we haven't trimmed, uh, you can't actually really change your start and end points because you have a full clip. Okay, so the next tool I would like to talk about is the slide edit clip, uh, slide edit tool. And you can access that from within your multi-tool by hovering your cursor at the top of the clip. So what the slide edit will allow you to do, just move my clips back next to one another, is you can actually overwrite a portion of a clip that is adjacent to the clip that you're moving. So say for example, I don't like where the end of this middle clip falls. There's kind of just, uh, for whatever reason, 
there's just an empty space in your frame or, or whatnot. Um, and I want to shorten that a little bit, change where the ending is. So what I can do, and this is kind of going back to what I mentioned about this position indicator, how you can snap to it. Say I want this middle clip to end right about here. So I place the position indicator there. Then with my multi-tool, um, select it on near the top of the, the clip that I want to move. Drag it until it kind of snaps. You see how it just kind of locks onto that position indicator? And then release uh, the mouse. And then it'll snap right to the, where you left your position indicator. So that's kind of just a handy way uh, that you can make use of this and um, bring your clip to exactly where you want it to end or start. Okay, so the final tool that I want to show you um, is the Roll Edit tool. Now again, you can access this from the multi-tool, uh, and you do that by just hovering in between two clips. You notice this icon with a left and right facing arrow shows up. Now once you have that, you can either drag to the left or the right. And notice two windows show up within your viewer. Now the window on the left is showing you where uh, the clip on the left is going to end. And then the frame on the right is showing you uh, where you're going to fall within the clip to the right. So this is kind of handy if you have uh, two adjacent clips and you want to edit how they kind of transition together. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's pretty, you know, intuitive once you play around with it a little bit. So that's pretty much all the tools I wanted to show you. Um, again, there's maybe a few more I didn't go over, like Ripple Edit uh, and Retime, but these are pretty uh, self-explanatory. Um, Retime uh, is does just what it sounds like it would do. Uh, you can change the duration of a clip simply by selecting your retime tool, clicking on the clip, uh, on the end of the clip, or you know whichever end, left or right, depending on where it falls. And say you want to make it shorter, you just drag to the left, and then you'll get a little percentage number here uh, that shows you how much you've increased the speed of the clip by. So here, 189.4% uh, would actually indicate that you increase the speed of the clip by 89.4%, um, because 100% would mean that you have a unmodified clip duration. And then, if you want to make the clip longer, let me go over to my move tool here and get these out of the way. Um, all you would do is move it the opposite direction. And now notice the percentage is less than 100%, um, indicating that we've actually increased the time it takes for the clip to play through. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty straightforward tool. Um, the Ripple Edit is also, it's a pretty simple tool. Um, it's actually really sim similar to the Slide Edit tool, so I'm not really going to go over that. Uh, if you do have any questions on how it works, uh, you can always... Um, hover over the tool description over here. Um, and also for additional help, you can go to the help tab on your main toolbar and look through uh, the documentation and release, or not release notes, but uh, you can look through the documentation and also uh, perform, a, perform a search to see exactly what the tool does. So anyway, uh, that's all I have for now. Uh, thank you very much for following along. I hope this was helpful. And have a great rest of your day.